Hi, today we're going to answer the question, what is the difference between osteopenia and osteoporosis? And which group has a higher risk of fracture and which group actually sustains more fractures? And the answer might surprise you. So stay with me. I'm Dr. Lisa, I'm a physical therapist and a specialist in osteoporosis and bone health exercise. And let's get right to it. What's the definition of osteoporosis? versus osteopenia. So in the 1990s, the World Health Organization got together to try to establish a, a marker that would determine who was really at risk for fracture so people could be identified if they were at risk before they actually fractured. So they determined that two and a half standard deviations away from normal would be the definition and the diagnosis of osteoporosis. Now this is based on DEXA scan testing for bone mineral density. And we'll use this as an example for postmenopausal females. And the comparison is to a 30 year old female with normal bone density. So a, a, a score that is 2.5 standard deviations below normal would give a T score of minus 2.5. It's kind of like a thermometer. The lower the number the go the lower the number goes, the lower the bone density or colder like a thermometer. So minus 2.5 is the cutoff that sets the definition for someone having osteoporosis as a diagnosis. Now, before that occurs, as someone is losing bone density, then the first score that determines osteopenia is minus one. So if you go from normal bone density, which is anything between a one to a minus one, and suddenly you hit minus one, now you're in osteopenia range. Minus one to minus 2.4 is osteopenia. This is a precursor to osteoporosis. Osteoporosis is the diagnosis. Osteopenia is not. It is a warning sign of what may occur, even though your physician may begin to make recommendations on medications in the osteopenia land. There is some understanding of treatments and modifications and lifestyle and exercise that you can make that can change and modify that score. And the closer you are to that osteopenia range or normal bone, the more likely you are to be able to change that trajectory into osteoporosis. So knowing and understanding your T-score can make a big and powerful difference to help you know that there are steps you can take to change it. So minus one to minus 2.5 is osteopenia. That is also known as low bone density. Once you cross over into minus 2.5 or lower, that is also known as very low bone density. So you may see those two terms used differently in research or literature or in groups that you're in. Low bone density also means osteopenia and very low bone density also means osteoporosis. Now, which group is a higher risk for fracture? Well, osteoporosis group is at higher risk. They have lower bone density, and so the risk for fracture is greater. But which group actually sustains more fractures? The osteopenia group. And that is simply because of the prevalence, which meaning the sheer number of people that are in the range of low bone density, the precursor is much larger. So, so many more people in osteopenia range and who are maybe a little younger and quite a bit active, they have more total fractures compared to the osteoporosis group, but that's just because there's far more of them. So that explains a little bit of the risk. I specialize in teaching osteoporosis and bone health exercise. So the earlier where I can work with a client and teach them the right exercises, the sooner we can make a difference in helping them prevent falls and prevent fractures, improving their bone density and their bone quality. Exercise can make a huge difference. The right type of exercises that targets the muscles along the spine, the core, working upper body and lower body, and avoids exercises that may be unsafe or risky. I share lots of free content on my YouTube channel just for this purpose. Hey, thank you for watching. If this was helpful information, I would really appreciate if you would leave me a comment below and feel free to share this video widely.